The worst operator in the game and last place at number 70 is Tachanka. Now, Tachanka is not actually a bad operator in concept, it's just the fact that his fire radius is so small that people can just walk through the fire, and when they walk through the fire and you have a launcher in your hand, there's not much you can do about it. My 69th spot, hmm, is Kali. <laughs> Now, Kali has the same issue as Tachanka, where the ability is not necessarily the issue, but it's what you have to do after you use the ability, which in Kali's case is a large sniper rifle that is way too zoomed in for your own good. Now, the secondary SMG isn't terrible, but it's not great either, especially for console players who can't control the recoil. Someone who you can control the recoil though on is Blackbeard in my 68th spot. Blackbeard isn't the worst operator in the game, he's a little bit underrated in my opinion, and you're only going to lose with him a lot if you're repelling on windows. If you don't do that though when you run in with your gun up, you can actually get a little bit of value out of him, but not enough to put him higher on the list. Someone who's a tad bit higher on the list though would be Sens. Now Sens' gadget hasn't changed at all since they have been released, but their gun is actually pretty good. If you have coordinated strats with Sens and you don't mess the lineups up, Sens can actually be a good operator, but only in very certain scenarios, just like Amaru, who can be great, but only in certain situations, and those certain situations are only about 20% of the time that Amaru is actually being played. That's why she's not very good. Now, in a running gun meta, this is pretty favorable, but a lot of the times it's a 50-50 chance whether you live or the enemy lives, so just not that good in my opinion. Thunderbird is the same way. Out of all the healers, Thunderbird is definitely the worst unless you're on console. Now, she has the fastest healing, but she has the least amount of healing, and in a game where it's a one-shot headshot, you're not getting healed much, so I'd rather have a little bit less healing, but it heals more than a lot of healing, and it heals less. You know someone who doesn't need a lot of healing, though? Monty, because he's got a big shield in front of his face. Now, I don't think Monty's a bad operator at all. I just think the people above him are a little bit better. Monty is great, the better you know how to use him, but the fact that most players are silver and gold means that Monty won't be used to the majority of the potential, in most ranked matches. The same goes for the other two shield operators, the first of which being Blitz. Blitz again, not a terrible operator, and in the right hands he can be very, very good. But he's only really situational. You can't bring him every site, and you can't bring him on every single execute. You know someone that you can bring on every site though is Clash. You can bring Clash on every single site. Do I recommend you do it? Probably not, just because the enemies will get mad at you and play Clash against you and your teammates won't like it. But I think Clash is a little bit overhated and underrated, although she's still nowhere near anybody that is above her. Someone who's a lot more mobile though would be Oryx. Oryx has the T5 SMG, which is really the only reason that he is so high. His ability is not that good, he's cool for flanking, but if you want to flank you can just play Cav or pretty much anybody that roams at all. It's pretty underwhelming, and unless you pair it with a Thunderbird, you're not going to use him to make rotations, so he's pretty useless except for his T5 SMG. Coming into my 60th spot, though, is Ella. A lot of people might be surprised that Ella is this low, but if you compare it to the people above you, it might actually start to make sense. The only thing that she really has going for her is her good weapons, which only good players can use, and her deployable shield, which is brought by a lot of other operators, so there's not really much to Ella. Especially now that screen shake intensity is something that you can just toggle off, her mines don't do much in gunfights and still allow you to shoot people with ease. Now, she does have an operator that is literally just a better version of her, which is Thorn. Thorn has a good gun with a deployable shield and three proximity traps, just like Ella, but these traps can actually kill people and she has a 1.5. It's just Ella, but a little bit better. I don't think Thorn is all that good, the only thing that she really has going for her is her 1.5, because like I said with Ella, everybody brings a deployable shield now. Her traps also aren't great, they don't get kills a lot often of the time, but they're just good for information. Speaking of somebody who is good for information, let's go over Grim. Now Grim got a series of buffs that made him really good to get kills with, and his ability even got reworked, but it's just not enough. The reason for this being is because you have operators like Dokubi, Lion, Jackal, IQ, Osa, or really anybody with information that is way better than Grim and easier to use. The fact that he has such a clunky launcher as well, even though they buffed it, is a really, really bad thing for Grim. Somebody who's a bit easier to get speed kills with though is Glaz. Now, Glaz, all you have to do to activate his ability is toggle on your scope, and you can keep it toggled for the rest of the game. If his sniper wasn't so zoomed in, he would be the perfect entry fragging operator. He can see through smokes, he has frag grenades or EMP grenades, he's a 3 speed, and he has a secondary SMG, a great operator that I think is pretty underplayed. Someone who is overplayed though is Turborow. Tur 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 I don't know how you say their name. Turbo, completely overrated. I think it is one of the worst defenders that has been released in the past two years. The only thing that Turbo has going for them is the fact that you can throw it on a wall and it can help your bandit work K trigger. But the bandit and K claw won't activate because the wall is frozen, meaning that the thermite and ace 
have time to just pick their gadgets up off a wall. So the best thing that this thing does is waste time or freeze claymores on the other side of a window to what you just have impacts for. So I think he's pretty useless. I don't know if it's a he, if it's a they. I don't know. I don't know. Someone else with a blue operator icon is Malusi, and I think Malusi is very overrated. Malusi is just a way worse version of Fenrir, with no optics on her gun, on an MP5, which isn't that good of a gun already, and being a 3 armor, I think Malusi is one of the worst operators you can pick if you're trying to have fun, or get kills, or be useful, uh, or win. So, <laughs> Malusi definitely deserves to be this low, in my opinion. Next is Fuse, and I think Fuse is a little overhated. He has a really good gun, the best in the game, with the best scope in the game, and in terms of utility clear, there's nobody like him, uh, but if you're trying to get kills, Fuse is not going to get you kills. It's just going to get that pesky deployable shield, which other operators can just do better. So Fuse is one of those operators that's not bad, but just not as good as any other operator that does his job, but better. Someone else who is wildly situational is Pulse. Now, I don't think Pulse is a bad operator, but you can only bring him on one to two sites making him wildly situational and making him really bad on any site that you go to that isn't one of the specified sites that he is situational on. Somebody who is a lot more applicable to a lot more sites though is Vigil. Vigil you can roam any site anywhere, it doesn't matter, and you will get value out of him if you hear a drone and you activate your ability. He wastes a lot of time, but in terms of roaming, he's probably the most underwhelming roamer in the entire game other than like Oryx. Pair this up with the fact that he doesn't even have a 1.5 time scope and you can begin to see why I put him so low on this list for the current meta. Someone else who might surprise you for how low they are is Maverick. Now Maverick used to be the cream of the crop, the best harbinger in the entire game. Utility wise, he's still a great operator, but meta wise, he isn't. He's too slow, and if you try to use him to get a wall, half of your team is going to be dead by the time that you get the wall open, so it's just not worth it at all. He definitely has a place, but that place was in the meta two years ago. Not anymore. Someone who I think is really good in this meta is Nock. Nock, 1.5 time scope with frag grenades, has the ability to deal with cameras and an increasingly camera heavy meta, and even without the silent steps, she can still be sneaky around any enemies that aren't paying attention. I think Nock is a sleeper pick, and if you pick Nock every round, no one's really going to complain because they also understand that she's not that bad of an operator. All you need is a good playstyle and some good aim, and to run away every time that you're spotted, and they won't know where you're coming next with some free round wins that you can get as Nock. Her sneaky defensive counterpart, Caviera, is next on the list, which, in my opinion, is the most underrated operator in all of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. With the third highest win rate out of all defenders in the past two years, Caviera dominates in the higher ranks. Those stats that I just laid out for you are also on PC for Emerald and above, which are the best players playing Rainbow Six Siege at all right now. So if the best players are using Cav and winning the most with her, then obviously she's doing something right. Every time I play Cav, I get multi-kills every round because people forgot how to deal with her. If you know what ghost pressure is, Cav applies the most ghost pressure out of every single operator by just existing. I made a video on this on my channel that you should go check out as well. Someone who I think is slightly better than her though is Aruni. Aruni is pretty good, but I think she's very overrated because of the fact that there's way too many things that counter her, making her ability not even active for over half the round. So she's a three armor as well, making it to where you can't even do your job properly. Everyone has flash grenades, EMP grenades, frag grenades, Yana clone has an ability that can counter her, so it's just not often that her gates are actually getting any value at all. Pair this up with the fact that you have to use her DMR because her P10 Roni doesn't even have a 1.5 time scope and you're a 3 armor, and this makes it to where you can't even take reliable gunfights in a gunfight heavy meta, which is why I put her so low on this list. Somebody that you can take a lot more gunfights with though is Twitch. Twitch is an operator that I think is highly overrated. Twitch might be higher if you are on console, but on PC when people are easily able to shoot your drones, Twitch does not do that well. She just doesn't do that well, especially with Brava and Flores being in the game. I think she is the worst droning operator out of everybody. The nerf to her F2 as well is not helping her, considering now you just have to run a DMR, and Twitch is just a little underwhelming most rounds. You're not getting many Twitch plays unless they have a Mirror or a Goyo, both of which are now counterable by Ash and Kali. So I think she just got worse with the Ash and Kali buff, so I had to put her low on the list. Above her though is Echo, who I think is pretty underrated. Most people play Echo by just randomly throwing around his cams trying to deny a plant, but in a meta where nobody is planting, you need to use his Echo cameras right next to you to swing and kill people who you stun. I think it's a very effective strategy that has worked very well in my ranked games. The only issue is, is you have to be on a map or a site where you can pull it off, and you have to have good aim and good game sense. Like I said, most of the player base is silver and gold and on console, so they're not gonna be that good much less good enough to play Echo effectively. Someone who's a little bit easier to play though would be Brava. I think Brava is a very good operator because 
the more utility that the enemy team brings, the better Brava is. The reason that she's so low though is because they have to actually be bringing utility for her to be useful. If they don't have any hackable utility and you just want to get rid of default cameras, you might as well bring Twitch or IQ. It just doesn't make sense to bring Brava a lot of the times unless they're bringing hackable utility. But even then, if they're bringing hackable utility, you could always just play Thatcher and disable it for them too. The fact that she also has to be on her drones most of the round makes it to where in a fast-paced meta, all of your team has already died or you've already won the round by the time that you're off your drone. So I think she deserves to be a little bit lower than most people think. Someone else who is extremely situational is Capitao. Capitao is a great operator, do not get me wrong, but you can't play him unless you're in a coordinated stack or you have a plan set in mind. Also, Capitao thrives in a plant-heavy meta or in a plant-heavy site. In a meta, again, that doesn't favor plants, Capitao is just not going to be as good and there are going to be less and less situations where you can viably use him for the plant. He's really good at being a support operator, but we're not really in a support meta. You know who is not a support that's really good though? Alibi. Alibi is a really good fragger in the meta currently, but I don't think she nearly compares to anybody above her. This said though, her MX Storm is one of the best SMGs in the entire game. She also brings observation blockers, which pair really, really well with her gadget, allowing you to get some free kills with a high skill ceiling, the better and better you are with Alibi. Her seasonal counterpart, Maestro, is even better though. With the current Maestro buff, seen how has three cameras and reduced cooldowns, meaning that if they bring in Ash, or somebody with frag grenades, you aren't completely countered because you have a third maestro camera that they can't get. Also, you're able to fully down people who are going for a plant if they have full HP with maestro cameras now due to the fact that he has shorter cooldowns when it matters and longer cooldowns when it matters. So maestro, I think right now, is actually pretty good. If you have observation blockers that can cover your cameras in the prep phase as well, he can be even more sneaky with his cameras, allowing him to even be good in a meta where planting is not as viable. Someone who I think is a lot more meta though currently is Finca, and I think Finca is highly underrated. Her adrenal surges are pretty good, and everybody agrees on that. But what they don't agree on is the fact that the LMG got nerfed, so the LMG meta and what she resided in the most is now not even a thing anymore. But the LMG honestly is not that hard to control. Like, I use it all the time. People overhype the LMG nerf. It's not that bad. If you're on console though, or maybe you just have terrible aim, use the spear, it's not that bad either. She also just got her frag grenades back too, so I think she's gonna start to see a little bit of a rise in play, but unfortunately there's just better other fragging operators on this list, and that's why she is as low as she is, but trust me, I think I might have wanted to put her higher on this list after this new season comes out, because I have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of Finca players. Coming in right above Finca is Amaru. Now, you might be surprised to see her a little high on the tier list, but honestly, I mean, we're still kind of in the trenches. This is pretty low. But I think Amaru in this meta currently is actually pretty good. A lot of the times when I see Amaru players in high elo, they don't actually do terrible. But I, I think especially compared to like last season or the season before, she definitely has fall off. You know who else has fallen off though? Flores. Flores is a great operator, don't get me wrong, but he suffers from the same thing that Brava suffers from. You need to actually have utility that Flores can destroy for Flores to be good. There's just too many caveats to playing Flores. One, again, you have to have stuff that he can destroy. Two, they can't have a mute. Three, they can't have a mozzie. Four, it has to be on a map where the Flores drones can't get easily shot. Bank, terrible example. There's too many long hallways. His Flores drones will just get shot. There's just too many caveats. If we compare him to somebody like Sledge, who doesn't have any caveats, you just bring a sledgehammer and you'll do fine then you begin to see why Flores might be a little more situational and not as good in today's meta than you think. Also, he suffers from the same thing that Bravo suffers from, where he's on his drones way too much, and by the time that the round has already been decided, he's still on his drones, right? So, just not as good. Someone who I think is a little bit better than Flores and may have risen above him in the ranks is IQ. Now, you would have never caught me saying this in the past two years, but she just got frag grenades. She also has a 1.5 on the commando, pretty good. Her ability also pretty good, right? So I think she's actually pretty good. The frag grenades were a great change to her. She's also a three speed. So I think the fact people are going to be playing her for her frag grenades, they're going to start realizing that IQ is like a really good operator because she's a three speed with a 1.5 time scope and a sort of good ability, right? So I think I think she deserves a bit higher of a spot on this list, especially compared to the other operators like Ella, Oryx, and Clash, right? She definitely deserves to be above them. We can all agree on that. Somebody a bit more controversial though is Frost. Now a lot of people did not like the Frost rework. 
I don't think it makes a difference at all in her placement, but I am placing her a little low than most other people would uh, before the Frost rework in mind. So Frost rework makes it where people can self-revive. Yes, I don't think this is a big deal because most people don't want to self-revive in the first place because if they do, they will not be able to win a single gunfight for the rest of the round due to the fact that they can't even sprint. They're leaving a huge blood trail. They're grunting. They can only see half their screen because it's black and white. So it just doesn't make sense to take a gunfight. It makes more sense. Just wait for your team. The only reason that I think people would ever actually use a self-revive option is if their teammates can't get them or they're in solo queue. So at a certain point, it's just a comfortability change. So I don't think the frost mat rework actually means that much, which is why I didn't put her as low as most people would have wanted me to put her. Somebody who I did put lower than people thought I should put on is Nomad. Nomad, I don't think is that good. Nomad for flanks is terrible because you can easily just crouch next to the Nomad and shoot it because you can see it before it can see you. Now, you can place the Nomad air jabs higher, yes, but in a meta where everyone is roaming and every roamer has impact grenades, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Especially with everybody running suppressor who can easily just shoot the air jab without you knowing, you can get flanked even when you have a Nomad. Even so, there's certain maps that you can't even play Nomad from because all the air jabs are shootable. Maps like Villa, where you can't put a single air jab on a red stairs or main stairs due to the fact that defenders can shoot the air jab from wherever you place it. I think Nomad is great for runouts. I think Nomad's great for runouts, but that's about it. 1.5 time scope with the flash grenades as well on the ARX. I don't think is that terrible either, but I think those are only the actual reasons that I put her even this high. I think she honestly deserves to be lower, but due to the fact that there's a huge stigma around Nomad being super, super good, I had to put her a little higher so people weren't screaming at me in the comments. Someone who I know people are going to scream at me for, though, is Zero. Zero is highly, highly overrated in my opinion. Zero, great concept of an operator, but if you're solo queuing, you're not going to get any value out of his cameras because your teammates have to actually be giving callouts on your cameras for them to actually work. And asking your teammates to give you callouts even in PC champion lobbies where I am is just too much. Now you can watch your own cameras, sure, but at that point, just get flank drones and do the exact same thing, right? Doesn't really make sense. But Zero, still a great operator, He's much better than over half the people that are on this list. So I know I'm giving him some credit, but I think the console community way over high zero in my opinion. Someone who's a little bit underrated though is Castle. Castle, you can't play in every single site. That is completely true. So if you want to put him lower for that reason, I completely understand. But what I will say is the better that you are at Castle, the better Castle actually gets. And people are starting to learn more and more default Castle strats, which makes him just generally viable. Not only this, but he has a 1.5 time scope on a gun with absolutely zero recoil. You put an extended barrel on that baby, it does some pretty good damage too. Proximity alarms that you can easily use in tandem with his castle strat to get even more value out of castle. And then also, even, even if you just want to randomly barricade windows and doorways, you will get value out of him because you're wasting attack as utility. So I think castle is super underrated. I love playing castle, uh, so I, I had to put him this high on the list. Somebody who's really good at countering castle though is Hibana. Now, Hibana is a little bit lower than the other Breachers, but I think it's because she's so situational. She's versatile in the fact that you can destroy soft and hard breaching utility with her, but if you want to do that, you might as well just bring Ace with breaching charges. Ace is the better version of Habana by far, and unless you're getting hatches, it's going to stay that way. The next operator is Goyo. Now, Goyo I think is a little bit underrated. He has a 1.5 time scope on the Vector, which is just absolutely crazy. And because you can place his utility in the prep phase, it makes it to where you can play however you want, you can play aggressive, you can play passive, because if you die, it doesn't matter, your teammates can use your utility too. So he is just really versatile, very, very easy, a great gun, so I had to put him pretty high on the list. Somebody else who's pretty easy with a great gun is Ram. Now the reason that Ram isn't any higher is because you can only play Ram if they're going a site that is not the second floor. The issue with that though is that the most played sites in Siege are second floor sites, so you're not going to be playing Ram most of the time. But when you do play ram she's pretty good 1.5 time scope on the r4c a great gadget flash or smoke grenades but she is a free armor which i don't really think matters but it's just the fact that you can't use her half of the game because you can't use her on second floor sites that really makes her this low someone who you can use on almost every site though is thermite i think thermite's great don't get me wrong but when Ace exists and you don't need a secondary hard breacher, Thermite becomes increasingly underwhelming. Ace is just going to be the better pick 9 times out of 10. But who knows? He might be a little bit higher because I did record this before the new season in which Turbo Rao was coming out. And I think he is probably going to be the best against Turbo Rao. So we'll see. His counterpart, Thatcher, though, is my next operator. And Thatcher is a great operator. Don't get me wrong. But when was the last time that you saw Thatcher in your games? 
It's been a while, hasn't it? Out of 10 games, how many times do you think a Thatcher gets played? Maybe twice? Maybe? Why do you think that is? It's almost like he's not a top 10 operator anymore because EMP grenades exist and people aren't getting walls as open as much, which by the way is why I put Thermite so low. Thatcher is a good operator, but there's just never a correct time to use him because there's so many operators that you can bring instead that have EMP grenades as well. Someone who you can bring every single round though and it be viable is Mozzie. I think Mozzie is pretty underrated. If someone takes Warden, your next pick in my opinion should be Mozzie if you want to run around with a 1.5 time scope. The P10 Roni, if you know how to manage your ammo, is really nice. You also have drone denial, you have anti-information, and you have information on top of that if you choose to utilize that. He's also a two armor, two speed, and he has a nitro cell. So the versatility with his gadget and his loadout is very, very nice and great to lean on, but also his gun is just great for anybody who wants to swing anything. Someone who also has great utility and great kill potential is Jackal. Now Jackal is not a top 10 operator due to the fact that Dokabi is very powerful right now. Why would you want to track down one person when you can use Dokabi to track down all five and bring more utility in the process? Jackal has great guns, sure, and if you're going against somebody who's trying to 1v1 you on the roam because all of your teammates are trying to open a wall, then Jackal can be pretty good, but he's also banned 90% of games, so you're just never going to play him. So ranking him any higher than operators like Fenrir, Azami, Ace, Dokubi, or Valkyrie just doesn't seem fair anymore. The same goes for Bandit, who's my next operator. Bandit used to be really good and almost a must pick for every single site. But with EMP grenades in the meta and Thatcher being banned less and less due to the fact that there's EMPs, Bandit is just not that good. Also pair this up with the fact that you can play Cade and Cade trick even better with Turbo Route on the table, it just doesn't make sense to play Bandit unless you're playing it in tandem with Cade to keep even more walls closed. He is a higher speed count than Cade with a Nitro Cell, but Cade also has that Nitro Cell and as you see with Warden, speed doesn't really matter. So that's why I put Bandit below Cade. And to anybody's surprise, the next operator is Cade. Cade and Bandit really go hand in hand, but I think Cade is just the better version of Bandit in today's meta due to the fact that Turbo Rao exists, and a good Cade trigger is better than a good Bandit trigger because Bandit can only do one wall at a time, while Cade can do three and a hatch, right? So it just doesn't make sense to be playing Bandit over Cade, especially with EMP grenades. They can easily find those Bandits, but it's much harder to find Cades than it is Bandit charges. So I had to put them higher than Bandit on this one but who knows, the meta might change. Even if the meta changed though, I don't think Wamai would move because Wamai is a solid anchor of an operator that has always been low A tier on most tier lists. He has a 1.5 time scope and a great ability. He's very simple and unless they completely rework his gadget, the actual gadget itself is just a good gadget. So it doesn't matter what happens to him. He'll always be, Jesus Christ. He'll always be good on a tier list. Sorry, these hoes are blowing up my phone. I actually don't know what to do about it. Someone who probably gets no hoes though is Osa. Osa I think is actually pretty underrated for the PC community. I think the only people that actually appreciate Osa fully are the console people. Osa is great. You put an Osa shield down, you have a 1.5 time scope with a drum mag gun, and you just win rounds. Pair that up with EMP grenades to get walls open, and then you put your windows down before the wall gets opened, and now you just have a huge force to be reckoned with. I mean, it's just great. Osa does something that no other operator can. Osa makes defender aggression choke points into attacker aggression choke points just by having a shield. I think it's very powerful and very applicable, and I think you can play Osa on every single site and it'd be good, which is why I put Osa so high. Somebody who you might not expect to be this high though is Rook. Keep in mind, again, the majority of players are on console and they are silver and gold, so not really that good of players. All you have to do as well to get value out of Rook is just to put his armor down. Then your team has a higher chance of winning. Also, Rook has the highest win percentage out of every single operator in the entire game right now, and he has for the past, I think, two seasons, maybe? Don't quote me on that, but you can see he's pretty, pretty good. And a 2x scope on defense on an SMG is actually pretty insane as well. Somebody else with a good scope on an SMG is his counterpart, Doc. I think Doc is the best healer in the entire game, hands down, because of the pure amount of healing that Doc provides. Now, like I said, it's a one-shot headshot game, so you won't be able to heal people as much, which means you just want to be healing people a little bit with a lot of healing, which is why I think Doc is so good. He also has an MP5 with a 1.5 time scope and a bailiff for setting up sight, paired that up with barbed wire, and he's just an overall sight menace. Really, really good in my opinion, and I definitely think he deserves a higher rank on a lot of people's list than he actually gets. Someone else who's very underrated is Legion. 
Legion with the buff is absolutely insane. Now, his mines aren't invisible, but as long as you put the mines next to doorways and not in front of them, same thing with staircases, they'll hit the mine anyways, because the proximity at which they hit the mine is actually greater, so it doesn't really matter anyways. Legion also has the T5, which we talked about on Oryx being so good. It's the only reason that Oryx is as high as he is. And then he also now has a super shorty, so he can help with tight setup, and with a shotgun buff, the super shorty is even better. So Legion, definitely a great operator, in my opinion. Coming into the top 20 though, we have Mira. Now Mira did get nerfed, and if she didn't get nerfed, I would probably put her higher. But I still think she's top 20, because Ash and Kali do counter her, but I think if people start playing Wamai, and you know, no one's playing Kali, so I, I don't really think it matters. I don't really think it matters. I don't think it matters as much as you might think. She's still very powerful and forces attackers to play a certain way or play a certain operator in order to deal with her, which I think is a very powerful concept. She also has a nitro cell and a vector and a shotgun for sight setup. Paired that up with the fact that she has a three armor sitting behind a window, I think Mira can be very good, especially in lower ranks when they don't know how to get rid of her. Someone who's better in all ranks though is Jaeger, who I think is actually getting better and better with this new season because of the fact that more people have frag grenades and people can't cook the frag grenades, meaning the ADS has more time to react to catch said frag grenades. I think frag grenades, because you can't cook them, are going to be used a lot more for utility, so Jaeger is going to see the spotlight a lot more than he did in previous seasons when people were just cooking them below to get kills from below. Someone who I also think will be getting more play this season is Solus. The reason for this being is because people are going to be running a lot more electronic utility this season due to the fact that people with electronic utility got frag grenades this season. I also think that she is the best roamer in the entire game, or at least one of the best with the most information denial and the most information out of anybody that we've ever seen. Pair this up with the fact that she has impact grenades and an SMG-11 shotgun combo, and she can be very, very fearsome to go up against. But with Solus, I've noticed that it just depends on if it's in the right hands or not. But somebody who is good in anybody's hands is Smoke. Smoke, shotgun SMG-11 combo, a great ability. Doesn't matter if he doesn't have a deployable shield, he will always be good. It's Smoke, it's the OG anchor. They haven't really done much to nerf him, so I shouldn't really have to say much about Smoke. Somebody who I could talk about ages, though, is Zofia. Sophia, I think, is a pretty underrated attacker. She is a three armor, but I think she's just a slower paced version of Ash. If you maybe don't want to run in and die and you're not as confident in your gun skills, Sophia is definitely the person for you. A lot of utility, great guns, and good pacing if you're trying to overpace yourself in a fast paced meta. Another good three armor attacker is Sledge. Sledge is just very simple. He's got a sledgehammer. You can't go wrong and you can't really mess it up with Sledge. He's just good. Pair that up with frag grenades and a 1.5 time scope on arguably the easiest gun to use in the entire game, and it's zero surprise that Sledge is as high as he is. But he has a better counterpart, which is Buck. Buck I think is better than Sledge because you can play under with Buck, he also has flash grenades, and you can use him in a lot more fast paced style because he is a 2 armor 2 speed, and he allows you to use his gadget faster than Sledge's gadget whenever you're trying to open rotates for yourself to get into the objective. These two are pretty interchangeable though, so do with that what you will. Somebody who's not interchangeable though is Capcan. I fully believe that Capcan deserves this high of a ranking on this list due to the simple fact that Capcan is better if your enemies are worse. Not only this, but if you're playing Capcan, you apply a lot of ghost pressure. He is second to Cav in the game when it comes to applying ghost pressure passively. It makes attackers have to waste time, energy, and mentality on checking every single doorway and window and archway that they hop into. A lot of the times they'll get lazy in a fast paced meta as well, and they'll just hit your mines. Even if they don't hit your mines, they'll shoot your mines, which gives you information in the process, allowing you to clean them up with your great 9x91 or PMM pistol and your nitro cell. So I think Capcan is an amazing operator. Someone else who I think is an amazing operator is Mute. Mute is the pinnacle of versatility. He has a nitro cell, a shotgun, SMG-11 for sight setup as well, and good for getting kills. You can use Mute to deny abilities, drones, ability drones, and everything in between. If they're playing Dokubi constantly, play Mute. If they're playing Lion constantly, play Mute. If they're droning you constantly, play Mute. If they're playing Twitch constantly, play Mute. If you need a wall closed, play Mute. If you play mute, you shut down over a third of the attacking roster that is able to play the game, which is very, very powerful, especially when you consider how good his loadout is. Somebody else who is a great loadout is Ying. I think Ying, by far, out of all of the operators that I've said are the most underrated operator, I'm actually serious when it comes to Ying, Ying has got to be the most underrated operator in the entire game. The most, hand down. Now, everyone's playing Warden, sure, but when was the last time you saw your Warden counter a Ying when a Ying was played? Chances are, you just haven't seen it, because Warden players don't even use their ability, and when they do, they're typically off-site anyways. 
Ying also is very good because you can fully cook her candelas. So you can blind a warden before he even realizes that a Ying is there, and you'll be able to kill him before he's able to unblind himself with his ability. Pair that up with the fact that she has a 1.5 time scope on an 80 round LMG with no recoil and smoke grenades so that she can even get the plant down and make it to where people can't see even more, and Ying is outstanding in today's meta. Definitely an underrated operator pick for me, and you need to start playing her if you haven't already. Another operator you need to start playing in my number 10 spot is Gridlock. We're getting to the best of the best operators in Siege right here. Now, Gridlock, with the new buff that Gridlock got, is really good. She has frag grenades, Ori and P grenades. She has a super shorty. She has a 1.5 time scope on an outstanding AR, and she has one of the best flank watch abilities in the entire game. But not even talking about flank watch, Gridlock really is good at locking the grid of a site, hence the name Gridlock, so that you can easily get a plant down or shut down rotation so that you can swoop in and kill people. The fact that she has a 1.5 time scope and frag grenades as well makes killing people even easy for her to do as a 3 armor and a utility heavy operator. Just like Mute is the most versatile defender, Gridlock is the most versatile attacker. Someone who's a bit less versatile and more straightforward though is Ash. Ash being able to counter Mira now is actually huge. Not only this, but she's able to also counter Maestro, who just got a buff, and she's a 3 speed with a G36C with a 1.5 time scope on it, makes her the pinnacle of what a good operator is in today's meta. Is her ability that good? Not really. But is she good in the meta? Absolutely. And that's why she deserved the number 9 spot on this list. Number 8 is Yana. Yana is just a more utility heavy and slower version of Ash, which I think she's even better because she also has flash grenades to help with her playstyle. Also, if you're a lazy droner, which if you play Yana and Ash you probably are, then you can use her clone to lazily drone around the map for you, which makes it quicker and easier to play an entry fragger in this meta, which is huge. And now we've reached our top 7, and in my number 7th spot I have to go with Lion. Lion is very versatile, just like Gridlock, but his ability in my opinion is even better and so are his weapons. He has the best shotgun in the game, the best DMR in the game, and a very, very good AR if you don't like either of those options. With a 50 round drum mag, a 1.5 time scope, and absolutely zero recoil, this weapon absolutely bangs. He has arguably one of the highest skill ceiling gadgets in the entire game too, making it to where even if you aren't a good player, you can still get value, but the better of a player you are, the more value you will get out of Lion. He's one of my favorite operators that I hold close to home, and you definitely need to start playing him. Somebody who you should stop playing though, even though he's really good, is Warden. Warden's great in this meta, 1.5 time scope on a very very good gun with a nitro cell. Not much I can really say, when it comes to 1.5 time scopes on guns, he just has the best, so in a fragger meta he's able to get frags the most efficiently, which is why he's up as high as he is. Is he really good with his ability? Not necessarily. His ability kinda sucks, he's also with free armor. but. In this meta, abilities don't matter as much, which is why Tachanka is in last, and you have somebody like Warden as high as he is, and as Ash as high as she is. But now, we've reached the top 5 operators, and these are absolutely insane, and you probably already know who all 5 are because they're just that good. Starting with number 5, we have Valkyrie. Now, a lot of people are sleeping on Valkyrie because you have operators like Azami and Fenrir in the game that are just dominating on defense right now, but take those two operators away and I guarantee you everybody will flock back to Valkyrie because she's that good of an operator. Is she slept on due to the fact that she's being outshadowed right now? Absolutely. But is she bad? Absolutely not. Because back when she was dominating in the meta, she was really, really good and her abilities and loadout were really, really good. But guess what? They haven't changed her. So obviously, she's still going to be really, really good. So in my opinion, Every single time you get to play Valkyrie, you need to be playing Valkyrie. Just like my number 4 spot, Dokubi. Dokubi has the highest ban rate that she has ever had in her entire life of being an operator. This is due to the fact that she's so good right now. Like I said, she's even better than Jackal, and the best when it comes to any roam clearing of any sorts. She has great information with her roam clearing ability and her ability to get every single defender camera on the entire game, but also she has great information denial because it forces defenders to shoot their own cameras, and it also makes it to where if you call, people who are even dead can't get on cameras and get information, allowing you to rush easier when they don't have any comms on you. She also has a 1.5 on her DMR, which is one of the best DMRs in the entire game, second to Lions in my opinion, and you can begin to see only half the reason that Doki be so good. She also has a Gon6, she also has EMP grenades, she also has smoke grenades, she also has the SMG12, so like, she's just crazy. She's just insane. If they took away two of those things from her, she'd still be one of the best operators in the entire game because she's just that good. But now we've reached the top three, the three best operators in Rainbow Six Siege currently. 
with my third spot being Ace. Now, Ace is great in solo queue specifically. If you're in a five stack, you can get away with playing other hard breachers or not even having to play hard breachers at all, so Ace isn't as necessary. But in a solo queue environment where people are not bringing as much utility and you just want to be able to get walls open but still kill people in a kill hungry meta, Ace is the perfect operator for you. For solo queue, he is the best hard breacher in the entire game. For comp, he's the worst, but that's a video for a different. He has the best weapon in the entire game, with the best scope in the entire game, and breaching charges if you want to get open soft destruction as well. So he's just an overall ranked menace if you want to get utility, but you mainly still want to focus on kills. Someone who is way more utility heavy though in my number two spot is Fenrir. Now Fenrir on release was an absolute monster, and guess what? He's even better because they gave him a bailiff, which I don't know why they would do. But Fenrir, I mean, is ju is just absolutely stupid. Like, probably the most broken defender I think they've ever released and not changed immediately. Fenrir, five mines, three of which you can activate, two of which you can pair up with barbed wire, all of which you can pair up with angles used by his bailiff, and he has an MP7. Just an absolutely stupid operator. Not to mention that your teammates can play off of the utility too, it's just crazy it's just crazy in my opinion but none of that compares to the number one operator which should come to zero surprise to anyone who's played this game for more than a week and that is azami azami is the best operator in the game right now hands down zero debate when it comes to a high skill ceiling gadget she has arguably one of if not the highest skill ceiling gadget ever created because you can make infinite amount of pixel angles or angles with her infinite amount of lineups you have five deployable shields that you can deploy anywhere and we talked about how deployable shields are already good she has five of them she also has a 9.91 which we talked about in capcan also being really good she has a deagle for site setup if that wasn't enough now she can set up site and she has barbed wire which she can pair up with her azami barricades to slow down attackers and then shoot them from a pixel angle 200 meters across the map if you thought any of these operators on this list were good, you ain't seen nothing yet with a zombie. But that's it for this video. Check out this next video. My name's Alka, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.